Hello, good evening and welcome to this Ibrox. It's your Rangers podcast and it's Scott Patterson welcoming you to a quite eventful Sunday night. It's nice to do a pod where I think everyone largely will be reasonably reasonably content. Um, before I introduce the, the contributors that join me for this Sunday night, I should say hello to our good friends at Zenith Coins, who are of course looking after, if you've if you've watched us and do continue to watch us on a, a weekly basis, you'll know that these guys are responsible for the Rangers coin collection. There are five coins in total, one for the Founding Fathers, one for Ibrox Stadium, one for the Barcelona Bears of 1972, nine in a row coin, and a coin that celebrates the 55th League Championship win under Steven Gerrard. You can check them out on all the W dot zenithcoins.com stunning set of coins I have to say so if you do have the opportunity to jump on I recommend you do if you are joining us on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook indeed we thank you for taking time out on Sunday night to, to come and check us out we really appreciate it if you aren't following us already I suggest you do that right across the board make sure on top of us and you will get a wee notification should you choose to toggle your subscription and um, you'll never miss any of the content that we put out on a weekly basis don't forget sundays mondays wednesdays and fridays so big night to discuss and we've got two of the big hitters on the pod one bigger than the other i have to say i'll let you make up your own mind um shug how are you i'm well mate i'm uh, happy to be here on a a pleasant night a pleasant uh, result to look back on and yeah all good and and listen wearing wearing red um to celebrate the slaying Yesterday at Ibrox, is <laughs> <laughs> the man in charge. Hi, Tommy. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well. Yeah, still, still, uh, still got the taste of mutton. Uh, in my, <laughs> oh wow! Uh, in my mouth, evidently. Um, I should point out this is a lion's top. I do like my, uh, I do like my rugby as well. So, so there we go. But yeah, nice to, nice to be honest. We're talking about something really, really positive. Yeah. Absolutely, and you know, it's funny you say that because I think that's really true. I think Shug and I were talking off here, and um. It is amazing when you do these pods and the the mood is low and you, you sort of feel it all the time. And when you come on to do this things, it's, it's it can be quite difficult to to um to boost yourself a little bit. Listen, we were in the game yesterday, Shug, Aberdeen coming to town. It's always a really, really strange fixture because they're just not very nice. And um listen, I don't want to say too much about the, the banner that appeared um in, in that end of the stadium. I, I I think it's probably we don't really need to say a huge deal about it. Those who will be offended by things like that will be, and rightly so, I have to say. Um if the shoe's on the foot other foot and Livingston fans, for example, unveil a banner of any nature today um across it. Almond Vale, I suspect it would be all across the press. I'm not sure that you're reading that much into that or about that, certainly, um, in the press today, which is a little bit disappointing, but perhaps not entirely surprising. Um, team lineups from yesterday, Shug, we saw starts. We saw, we saw starts for Red Van Sakala and James Sands playing in that sort of pivot role, if you like, um, with Lundstrom in the middle of the park. Was there anything that you would have changed from Geo's start in the living? No, I was I was really happy with it. Yeah, I think Sands playing in that six allows Lundstrom to get into the eight where he shows that he's a much better player and he's the player of last season. Yeah. Uh, and I've always been a big fan, as you know, with Sakala.
which is saying that Aberdeen have effectively sabotaged us for tonight. Yeah, that, that is exactly. That's why I'm wearing this red top. I'm behind the lines here, so, so, to speak. so as long as everybody, as long as everybody can hear the audio and they were getting that kind of Sean Connery accent that you were trying to trying to channel in there for a minute when you were a Sheen, uh, I think. I thought I'd go away. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's, so, seeing my, nobody's seeing my um, uh, poppy appeal mug, which I'm drinking my tea from. Oh, funnily enough, we've actually just came back, so your your timing, incredibly and very unlike you, Thomas, um, is is absolutely spot on. Shug, I want to speak to you about the first goal of the game, which which of course came to Aber- from Aberdeen. Um, I think it was probably the only black mark in the game, you have to say, because I think defensively um, it was really poor. Poor for a couple of reasons. I think um, I think James Tavernier really leaves Leon King a little bit exposed, um, who was turned inside out by the boy Duck, who I felt gave Leon King a bit of a, a, a challenging game, I have to say. Probably his most difficult game to date domestically for Rangers. Um, and the ball, of course, breaks out to Conor Barden, who I thought was really good for the, the first 25 minutes in the game, I have to say. And he puts Aberdeen one up. At that point, um, there's, there's people that are just disappearing. People are absolutely of the opinion, well, staring down the barrel of a official club statement at five o'clock on Saturday evening. Yeah, it's, uh, definitely we had that feeling about it. Yeah. Going off the back of last week, Livingston scoring early. Yeah, thankfully, it didn't turn out that way. But yeah, I thought Leon King, Leon King was really good yesterday, bar that sort of moment when he was turned inside out. But these are the yeah. games where he's going to get this. It's his men's football. He's going to need that experience and stand up to players. Uh, he didn't fill himself. He did greatly there. But uh, the big thing for me was Tav. I don't know what he was doing when he put the challenge in. Yeah, He didn't touch him. He knew he didn't touch him, but then he stops and he waits in the referee. He gave up yeah. rather than playing on. And it's like, a man of tavern. If, if King had done it, then you'd have been at Willie Jong. He's early in his career. Aye. But Bav, at his, his level, should have known he's got to play to the whistle. And especially now that we've got VAR in, if it had been a dive... They were going back for it, so why he stopped, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm not sure who was supposed to be tracking Barron. I uh, don't know if it was maybe James Sands. That's only black mark in the game was he Barron sort of came from midfield on his own with nobody tracking him. So there's a few errors in there, but uh, luckily we managed to get through it this time. Tommy, I don't think Tavs had a, a, a great season so far. I've I've said it on pods, and um, I, fortunately. Um, fortunately, many of the viewers and listeners don't have access to our WhatsApp group because it's been a right great laugh this week. <laughs> um, but what I would say is that, um, and what I have said is I don't think Tavs had a great season. I think it's been very, very quickly um, sort of amplified, if you like, the fact that Conor Goldson's not there. And I, I just, and it's easy to say this, I, I get that, but I think if Conor Goldson's there at the weekend, we, we just don't concede that time to go. I think you're right. I mean, to pick them apart, I'm more than happy to um, have a conversation. Screenshot them. Well, I was going to say, we might put, I think it's the drive for everybody to put things on Patreon. So we'll put the WhatsApp <laughs> on Patreon and make pay, make pay us to be able to get a sight of these, uh, these, uh, these messages. Um, I'm going to spike my own guns there by saying it's not worth it. Right? But, um, no, I, I think you're right. And I know people like to, so we'll take the, the, the tab thing first. Everybody knows he's, he's playing with them an injury or he's not at full capacity. Yeah. Depends how you want to position that, right? And it's quite clear in the way that he's playing the game because we're used to a rampaging James Tavernier talk about his defensive frail, he's not all you want, but at least he's, he's at the coal face all the time. It yeah, looks he's, he's lost maybe a quarter of a yard, half a yard as well. Um, in terms of the Goldson thing, I know it's still relatively fashionable um, to be able to slate Connor Goldson. Right? He's absolutely prone to high level mistakes, right? He's not Effie Ambrose, right? He's not Paolo Man- Maldini, right? Yeah. He's somewhere in, in between, so to speak. Best defender at the club, when fit, I thought was Hellander. I'm turning ever more towards Davies, I have to say, um, in terms of what I've seen of him so far. But Connor yeah. Goldson is the linchpin of the central defence. He's the linchpin of the defence for his ability to talk and coach players through. 
his ability to actually read the game. And I'll take that over the mistakes that he makes up to a certain point where he wants too much money. But that's the that's the point of him. I think you're right. We don't lose that particular goal uh, in terms of in terms of that. And I'm really looking forward to the formative partnership of Davies and, and Goldson yeah. you know, when he returns for the rest of the season. I think he does give that confidence to it as well. And whilst I'm on Conor Goldson, it shouldn't be lost that again, one of his absolute functions and jobs that well as he's been at Rangers has been to talk young players through who have been playing next to him. So always in the ear of Calvin Bassey, always in the ear of King, etc. That's one of the things you get from a Conor Goldson. So I'm not saying I'm, I'm hugely a massive fan of him or anything like that, yep. but I sometimes feel that there's a little bit of unfair press around about Conor Goldson. This is Ibrox contributor Scott Cameron, who isn't at home tonight watching Attenborough. He's at Stead, he's at home watching us. Um, Leon King learning on the job, huge future the boy has and will only benefit from, from this run in the side, which I think is absolutely right. Um, I, I do worry how exposed it makes him at the same time, but I, I appreciate what Cammy's saying. Kyle, 1872, interestingly, goes for a, another um, angle entirely. I'm going to be fashionable and continue to say we are not missing him. Um, is that our Kyle? I, 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 if it is, it means I can take direct action. Absolutely, one hundred percent. You're absolutely right. Um, for for Scott, uh, for Cammy, I'm I'm glad that he's uh, I'm glad that he's tuned in and he's uh, he's not. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to make a joke. I'm actually just not going to bother. No, I don't think he should. <laughs> he's going to stop me. <laughs> Lastly, on King Ofra Hill says, um, <laughs> for an eighteen year old King is real class, and I hope we can hold on to him moving forward. Which I think we all largely um are, are aboard that train. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Listen, we went. Sorry, sorry. Sure. I was going to say. One of the things like I was watching the game, uh, I couldn't go up to the game yesterday, and Ian Ferguson was in commentary, and he was very concerned that we were leaving 2v2 at the back. So yeah. it shows you the job that King was doing, because Aberdeen were leaving Miovsky and Duke up front, and King was there with Davis in the first half and obviously Sands in the second. So it's quite a big learning. Normally you get Especially in SPFL, there's only one man and that's two defenders. So I thought King, from that point of view, it was a great learning curve for him. And listen, speaking of learning, if it was Duke, I was certain it was Duck and I was calling him that, that all afternoon. So um, I'm glad you mentioned that, Chuck. Um, I'm disappointed we... that it's coming up towards Halloween and nobody's managed to thread together that and Duking for it. Oh, my you know, this is why this is why I, I'm the editor, right? This is the but, kind of talent that I bring to this as I brooks. I, I was actually going to comment on how tonight could have been a really scary pod, but I don't really want to go and, and it's not. Oh. So um we brought it back to one each. I, and I have to say it, it was a wonderfully worked goal from um a wonderful pass by John Lundstrom inside right channel to Tillman, who I thought was excellent yesterday. Um playing these guys in the, the right position is so important. Geo. Um Tillman cuts it across, great finish by Cholak, who I would argue now is our um, number one striker it just sticks in my mind that Kai Watson has done a fantastic article one of our new contributors um, across at this cybrox.wixsite.com um, which speaks to the point whether we should see Cholak or, or Morelos, I think Roof gets a mention in there somewhere, jump on and have a look, really good article Um Tommy, it was it was a really good finish by Cholak, but the move, the, the sort of movement from Lundstrom to to Tillman and the switch across was was really good, and it was a quick equalizer as well, which really really helped. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I was taking a moment there just to enjoy the slickness of your uh, of your hosting there as you, you drew in a couple of different threads. Listen, the listeners are getting it's, a treat. it's crackerjack, mate. It's crackerjack. Yeah, the listeners are getting a treat tonight, as <laughs> as am I, and, and Chug, it has to be said. But no, listen, you're absolutely right, and I do agree with you on the. Without being glib, I agree with you on the the Cholak point as well. Yeah, you know, uh, as somebody who really likes Alfredo Morelos as well, I'm pretty sick and tired of talking about Alfredo Morelos and other things. You know, it's so all fitness. Aye. Is he going to sign a deal or oh, whatever? You know, Alfredo Morelos just does what he's supposed to and gets fit and scores goals. Then I'm I'm happy camper. If yeah. he leaves at the end of the season. He leaves at the end of the season. You know that's entirely up to him. Cholak is not a like for like replacement. I'm not saying that. They're different types of players. Although it was good to see, you know, Cholak involved in some of the build up play as well. You know, a lot of people have said that he's he's not somebody who might be able to um, to generate assists and stuff like that. But actually, link up play seems to be getting better and better. Completely yeah. agree with your point about Tillman. I thought he was a standout. 
in the game and playing in the correct position and stuff like that as well. But yeah, ultimately Gio will stand or fall well, different things, but by how he plays that forward line. Yeah. So Jolak is doing everything he can to make the case for, well, even when Mariela says, at peak fitness, I should have this jersey, it should be mine, because I'm sticking the ball at the back of the net. I know Mariela yeah. gets one as well, we'll talk about that later on, but it was a really well-worked goal. And it is, you know, in terms of his finishing ability, be interested to see what the, the listeners think about this, or, and yourself and, and, and Shrug as well, but I've never been fully, fully brought on board that Alfredo Morelos is a top finisher. Right? And I know anybody could give me a host of finishes, right? And say, well, that's a lovely finish there. But I just don't think he's a natural finisher. I think he always takes that wee extra touch sometimes and he's a power finisher. He likes to smash it sometimes and actually a wee bit of finesse would, would see him score a lot more goals. Yeah. I think Cholak's the, the opposite. I think Cholak is a bit of a finisher. Um, and Quite frankly, I I think that's really important right now, as opposed to the ability to bully defenders. If we just keep that level of movement up the front, uh, in terms of uh, being able to get beyond as well, I've given you a lot more than what your original question was there. Ultimately, it was a good goal. I enjoyed it, and I think getting the ball into control in those dangerous areas and his ability to peel off is going to save us really well for the rest of the season. Yeah, indeed. Shug, we went 2-1 up just right on the stroke of half time, which was a, a really nice time. I actually remember saying to the guys sitting in front of me, now would be a really nice time to score um, because we'd had loads of pressure. Aberdeen hadn't really done a thing since since scoring early doors. We were camped in. Um, Sakala looked dangerous. Kent looked dangerous. Cholak's movement was causing them problems. Um, Ross McCrory nails Kent on the, the their sort of right-back position. Um and Barisic had came on for um, Red Fan in the first half, puts a cross in. Ball gets cleared and Tav hits a half volley. Their goalkeeper, who I thought was really good yesterday, um, palms it down to the left-hand side, doesn't quite get enough to put it out for a corner. And Ben Davies, of all people, um, hooks it back into play with his right and uh, Lundstrom's there um, to, to smash it home. It reminded me a little bit... Um, of his goal against Leipzig at the other end of the pitch, to be honest with you. Just his reaction to it. I think you could see a player that maybe personally felt he needed a goal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Uh, it was the pressure just lifted off him. And yeah. you could tell with his comments after the game how much it meant to him and he knows how much he's been struggling. Yeah, and He's not been putting the performances in that he wants as the whole team, I guess. Uh, it was no less than we deserved. It was. It should probably have been four or five at that point. So Carl had missed a great opportunity. Kent had missed a great opportunity. It was just we were just kept banging at the door, and it was great to see. And it was great to see it being rewarded when we just kept attacking, kept going for it, and full belief in ourselves. Yeah. Uh, I thought Tillman was superb yesterday. Where and I thought the system that remember when Gio came in, he talked about wingers being wingers. I Aye. felt that Sakala being on that right hand side in that first goal, him being right on the wing allows Tillman to take up that position just between the wingers Absolutely. and inside yeah. right or something like that. It allows him to take up that space and things like that. So you can kind of see a bit of what Gio wanted with Sakala. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm doing a Tommy and I'm getting the wheel. Well, yeah, but back, yeah, it was a good goal that was still deserved. Do you know if we, both, if we both do that? If we both do that, if you then listen, it's going to um, it's going to be like Monday before this pod finishes. So we we, we, we we both need to bring the listeners with us. It's going to be a very long night, for goodness sake. Um, so listen, we go into one at half time, and um, deservedly so, I, I think it's fair to say. I think we deserve to to sort of take the, the lead in. As I say, Aberdeen had done nothing. Um, other than score. Um, I, I have to say their fans sing a lot about um, Ian Durant and Walter Smith um, and David Cooper and, and Jimmy Bell. They were they were good to to sort of sing about them for, for part of the first half. Didn't really have a lot to sing about in the second half. Um, came out for that second half and they actually had a really good chance. Duke um, had a, a really good chance right at the start of the second half, header over the bar. Um, didn't lay a glove on us for the remainder of the game I have to say and Jim Goodwin sort of looked quite solemn I felt standing watching his game plan just dissipate before his eyes um, 
he scored the third goal um, f- for Rangers and it was really something that I think we've missed this season and something we've relied on historically over the last couple of years before Gio even came in by the way um, was that ball from Barisic to Tavernier randomly appearing as a right winger um, at, at that sort of far post great cross by the Croatian um, I think it could have been easy for Borna just to sort of dig his heels in and go on a wee bit of huff yesterday because he wasn't starting to be perfectly honest with you but I thought he played really well um, for, for the, the period he was on the pitch fantastic cross um, and Tav were a really good header at that far post Tommy wasn't it? Yeah, listen uh, again <clears throat> excuse me again I, I agree with you um, I thought Borna Barisic played pretty well actually when he came on I thought it was a really, really good cross. And yeah, we were used to last season, season before as well, used to do that left back to right back. Yeah. And it would always be Tav getting into the box and getting the goals and stuff like that. You know, I remember Gal Tassarai and stuff like that as well. It's nice to see it come back. Nice to see Tav score from open play. Nice to see him getting into the you know, I just referenced earlier, we were used to that Tav getting up and down, but he's kind of a wee bit of a, a knock. Well, that's him getting into the box still. And then having the the leap beyond the defender and a lovely a lovely header as well. I mean, it's if you've got a position where you've got full back scoring, but well, nobody's going to have a problem with that. <laughs> that that's mana from heaven, and Tab deserves the credit that he gets for that. You know, in terms of his in terms of his goal ratio, what we just want to do is see more of that. Yeah, it's it's pretty much that simple. Although I would also you know like to see other people chipping in uh, with goals as well. Uh, it'd be nice to see Barisic getting some actually getting on the end of that. But I don't think we'll ever see Barisic playing that kind of getting into the back post scenario. But yeah, lovely ball. Barisic is an incredible crosser of the ball. There's, there's no two ways about it. That's part of the frustration, I'd imagine, with everybody else as well. Yeah. Sometimes you just think, we know the talent's in there. Can you just remind yourself to get beyond the defender and just get it in? Right. Um, although I will give him a little bit of leeway in terms of it hasn't always been the right people in the box for him. Sometimes yeah. the ball can be there. But it looks terrible because nobody's made the run or nobody gets on the end of it and you get you blame the guy who's crossed it. It's not entirely true. But yeah, listen, it's great. Nice see Tav scoring. I'm always happy with that. Yeah. Shug, the second half was was full of chances for Rangers. Um you had um Sakala, who was excellent in in the second half, gave they brought in a left back. I think he was a relatively young guy. Sakala murdered them for for the length of time he was on the pitch was really, really impressive. I would argue um, that yesterday was probably Fashion Scala's best game for the club. I thought it was really, really good, particularly in the second half. Um, And I see someone has jumped into the comments asking if it was us at this is Ibrox who suggested he was a 2 out of 10. It absolutely wasn't us. Um, And I, I... I don't know who it was to be honest with you, although I think someone it was else. Ibrooks News. Um, although I can tell the, the last story if you bear with me for a second, there is lots of two out of tens. That this is this is Ibrooks. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm led to believe by your um, by by your listeners. Um, no, I, it definitely definitely wasn't the guys at this Ibrooks who gave him a whopping two out of ten. I thought it was excellent yesterday. Um, first VAR, I think decision. Um, domestically goes for us for that for the penalty certainly um, yesterday shugging when Tav steps up you think he's just going to tuck it away because he's not long scored and his confidence is brimming and he hits the base of the post and you're thinking oh my goodness um, disappointing for, for him to, to miss a penalty but I think I think it was almost supplemented almost the fact that he, he had scored before it I, I he must be really chuffed with how yesterday went for him because there are questions being asked of his um, his fitness. Is he injured? Is he not injured? Is how serious is Does he need to go for an operation the minute we wrap it for the World Cup? I think everyone seems to be in that case of, yeah, we largely expect to be hearing that he's went for a, an op during the World Cup. It was a good day for James Tavernier, I think, yesterday, regardless of missing that penalty. Yeah, definitely. Uh seeing the team perform under his captaincy, I guess, as well, and being getting called into question and things because as soon as the team's not performing, manager and captain are the first people you go for. But yeah, seeing that drive and I think it, it's what the team needs because he is he's a he leads by example and he's not a shouter or a bowler, but he he's somebody that his standards have been there for everybody else to follow and to tag along with. So there is an argument to say that when he's not hitting his peak, then all of a sudden 
getting up to that level either. Uh, but it's a great day for him. And then I think Tommy was saying about the crosses. It is something we've been missing. So I think I was in the point where I was on the incident match reaction pod last week after Livingston and the 73 crosses. There weren't 73 terrible crosses. Yeah. It was 73 crosses without somebody being on the end of it. Yeah. And that's when we're at our best. That's when we've got Tav coming in at that back post. When we've got somebody for the midfield driving in. It's what we've got to see. And hopefully Tav, I think we've got three league games left before the break. Get through these, get Tav back fit and firing for December. And hopefully he'll be showing up at the back post for a few more goals. Yeah. And headers in, whether that be Yelmas or Barisic that's setting them up. Tommy Morelos does come on. Um, we about, I think it was about 15 minutes to go. I don't have the, the exact time when he came on. Um, has a goal disallowed by VAR, very fractionally offside, you would have to say. Um, and then scores, I think it took about two and a half minutes for them to decide it was um, a, a valid goal. I just wonder the, the importance of him getting game time and scoring while Cholak is playing so well. Um, for Rangers is great because we know that if if we're bringing Morelos on, he's hungry and he's thirsty and he wants to score. Um, it's really important that he gets game time and hits the back of the net when he is playing, isn't it? A hundred percent. You know, and I, I think it was the 80th minute he came on. I think it was 10 minutes he got, uh, roughly. But yeah, I mean, I'm not rolling back on what I just said there about finishing and Cholak being the, the man in possession of the jersey. That's all absolutely correct and yeah, the point. But yeah, we need to competition in the squad and you want an Alfredo Morelos who's getting game time and getting fit and then able to push his or advance his case for the jersey or indeed the fabled play the ball for them um, you know I don't have time to mind that all right now but <laughs> I know everybody's desperate to see more and more of it and, and that's the whole point and it's good for good for him to get a goal because we all know is it time for cliches yes it's time for cliches we all know that strikers are confidence players yeah. and they love to get a goal not and that builds on it Somebody ring the, the cliche bell somewhere, <laughs> but it is the point. Once you've scored, you get you know you get a wee lift that you still get the predatory instinct because he sneaks in at the back post there and kind of gets it. And dare I say, and I'm not I'm not questioning his mentality or his personality or his attitude or anything like that. But just by definition, if you are coming back from injury, you're not playing. You've been the big noise up front for as long as you can remember. And this new guy's on the block and he's scoring, he's becoming a bit of a fan's favourite. Yep. You might not be bringing your best self to the training ground and being round about the score if you're not getting game time. Yeah. But now he's getting some game time and he's scored, so he's reinforcing that he's still relevant. And that can only be a good thing behind the scenes as well. Because you're trying to, Gilles and the, the staff are trying to keep everybody happy. And so it's a good thing to be able to say, well, you're still getting that, we're getting you on that road to fitness. He's still got a way to go though by by looking at him and his performance in terms of I think there's definitely more minutes needed I do wonder if he'll pop up in any reserve games or anything like that to just to, to just keep padding out or close door games I don't know if we'd be willing to risk such an asset like that but yeah it's always nice to get off the bench and see somebody coming back from injury and scoring early Tommy Stephen Conroy hi Stephen hope you're well um, jumps into the into the chat and suggests that Basically, Sakala now has the jersey for that right wing position moving forward. I think it's hard to disagree with that, considering how well he played, particularly second forty five yesterday. Yeah, I think Stephen and yourself probably fairly fairly correct on that. Now, I think it was a few weeks ago I was on and I was saying that I was not jumping on the fashion Sakala bandwagon. <laughs> Still not on it. I've yeah. looked at the website and I've seen what the tickets cost. Right, so <laughs> right, um, and I've made sure there's availability. But I'm still not on it. But I, I do agree with, with the point that he is, on the basis of those performances, I still think he's a tremendously naive player in terms of his positioning and stuff like that. Or Raw is maybe a better way to say that in terms of that. But yeah, he deserves his chance. He's performing better than anybody else. I don't think that's as big a compliment as it maybe sounds, to be brutally honest. I think it's up against what Scott Wright in there. And unfortunately, nobody's going to convince me that Scott Wright is a... Uh, has the ability to be a Rangers player for the long term. But yeah, so to you and Stephen, I absolutely, well, first of all, I appreciate Stephen's comment in the, in the chat. But yeah, I agree with it. He gets his chance. The, the point being, if he's going to get the chance, it has to be a run of games then. So yeah. even if he doesn't perform in the next one, we don't chop and change. Let guys actually play themselves into the team or play themselves out of the team 
that's it. We don't have a lot of don't have a lot of options anyway. It'd be interesting to see what happens in January come around round about that position actually. If Rangers try and do something on a loan perspective, somebody who's going to come in and start. Chuck, Tommy's absolutely right. I think the key thing for Sakala now has to be um a run of games. I think it has to be giving him the opportunity to develop a consistency. I'm I'm similar to Tommy in the sense that I'm not sure where I stand on on Sakala. Um I'm getting sort of um defence bumps in my rear end, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm very much on the fence with him. Um and I, I think I've said before, I, I I think Sakala's got a bit of the Nacho Novos about him. I don't think that um he is Raw is probably the right word, Tommy. I think you're absolutely right. Shug, I know you're a huge fan of Sakala. The key for him now, as I say, it has to be game time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Try to think with that old phrase is that was it hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So on. Something yeah. like that. And I think Sakala shows up. You know that he's given a hundred percent every single second he gets. Yeah. Um, He's been uh, his time at Rangers. He's been played as a striker. He's been played off the left. He's been played off the right. He's never had that run of games. Maybe if we're given these next three, four games on that right, maybe he starts learning that position and not sort of run as a naive. He sort of he gets past that. He, I think his final ball and stuff. I mean, he should have scored yesterday when he he got that one on one with a keeper. Absolutely. He, there's no question that he's lacking and he's never ever going to be one of the great players. He's not going to be in anybody's Rangers 11, I don't think. Yeah. Although, watch this space. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe by the time you get round to me, maybe I will put a fashion in there. <laughs> fashion on one side and louder on the other. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I think he absolutely deserves that run now. I mean, Matondo's been given a short right, has been given a short People have been calling for Kim or Roof, who will never ever be fit in my eyes to be given a shot out there. Arfield's been out there, Tillman's been out there. Not one of them have had that impression that Sakala had yesterday. So I think he more than deserves it had everybody else. Yeah, difficult yeah. for Kim or Roof to try and beat defenders when he's carrying a, a stretcher with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, with you on that. I'm with you on that, Shock. Came our roof, goodness me. Um, listen, we were obviously picked up a couple of injuries um, at the game yesterday, which will come to a second. We obviously are going to be missing Red Van, it looks like, out to the World Cup. And we, there's now um, a bit of, sort of debate over the, the fitness of, of Ben Davies with big games coming up, up until we break for the Qatar World Cup. Before we go on to that, Tom, I want to speak a little bit about James Sands. Um, brought in, and I think when he came in, a lot of people weren't, overly sure what he was. Was he a defensive midfielder? Was he a centre midfielder generally? Was he a centre half? I've seen guys suggest that he could potentially play as a as a backup right back. I think the position we saw him yesterday um, is, is absolutely clearly his best position. I thought it was really good yesterday. He controlled the tempo of the game. Um, was quite happy to look for a forward pass as opposed to maybe looking for something safe, left or right. Um, his best game for the club so far, I felt, yesterday. Again, yeah, I'm, I'm slightly disappointed that I need to keep agreeing with you. Um, <laughs> I'll find something to get frustrated about later on. But I, I, I do agree it was his best best performance. It was individually and as part of the collective. It was his, his best performance as well. I agree with you in terms of that positioning. I'm trying to recall now, I think, was it January this year we signed him? And it was an 18 months loan, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we've got, enough, we've got more than enough time to, to keep having a look at him. Again, James Sands is one of those ones that great yesterday, fantastic. I'm not sure exactly what the potentially agreed figure was. You get a range, depending on who you talk to, somewhere between the low fours to, to five, which is a, a lot of money, although there's definitely potential there. I mean, I think he's 21, 22, yeah. something like that as well. Let's see what he does between now and the end of the season before we you know, jump on, and I know, I, I know you weren't saying this there, but before we jump on that, he should absolutely be signed up the same as Tillman, right? You know, it's it's, it's the same as the the the, uh, the Beal stuff, but we'll come to that later on as well. But yeah. yes, in terms of the performance that was just in front of us, James Sands was in the right position, was playing really well, 
and look like a player and look like the type of player you go, oh, he's, he's just in his 20s. That's definitely one to get on the books. So yeah. if he carries that on, because making your name at Rangers, being a name at Rangers is not about having a great game. It's about consistently being able to have a great game, even when the chips are not in your hand um, or cards are not in your hand. It depends. I don't play poker. I don't know where the chips come in. Right? Um, I think there's chips somewhere. Right? I don't know about the cheese on the chips, but there's definitely <laughs> chips. Right? But that's the point. If these guys want to fill those jerseys and want to be at Rangers long term, because it's a ph- phenomenal club, then you can't rest on your laurels when somebody says, Magic, we've got a song about you, or you've had a great three months. That's nothing. That's a that's a solo day in a Rangers career. You want to do it? You want to keep doing it? You want to earn the contract? You keep doing it. You keep going to the world. Don't read the headlines. Don't rest on your laurels. And James Sands has got just a, as much chance of that as, as, as Tillman as well. But it does help when he's been played in a position that suits his game. Yeah. And I'm sure he was delighted when the manager finally got round to doing that. Do you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I remember when um, when we brought Sands in, and I must say I, I was guilty of jumping onto YouTube just to see what this guy was like, and we've all done it. Um, and I remember watching him play, and I'm not, I probably shouldn't mention this in a pod because we'll get him doing for it. However, I'm quite happy to take it. Um, I, he reminded me of Busquets when he played at Barcelona. Not in the sense that he was as good as Busquets, but just the way that he, he sort of played and the, the sort of the angles he took up the fact that he was almost quite happy for the guys that were playing in front of him to do their bit and he would just almost sit and do mm. what he knew he could do properly. Um, and I just felt, as I say, I, I felt yesterday he, he was really, really good and playing in the position that he has hopefully going to make his own. Whether we sign him permanently or not, I don't know. There's a bit of debate in the chat suggesting um, that, that we... We could should look at him. I think we will do that if there's a, if there's a, a deal achievable. I would thoroughly expect that to happen. Um, so just, just on that, and before Shrug jumps in, if you if you'll indulge me, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I I do get your Busquets reference there, by the way. And I know you're not saying like for like, you know that, right? No, no. Sergio Busquets, phenomenal player, right? I didn't quite see it when I first saw Busquets, but then I, I came round to it. But it sounds in that. There's a wider conversation now. So say you say you play Sands in front of the, the back four, right? And it's his job to police there. Then that frees up some of the conversation that we're having about this potentially defensive mindset of Geo. We'll come to that later with John Lundstrom's yeah. press conference, right? But in that, if you've got him sitting there, you've, you've got the ability to have more expressive midfielders in front of him. And then somebody playing behind the striker as well. I don't think we'll see two up top too much from Geo. But also, Sands, with a defensive mindset, has the ability to then shift across and do what you really, really wants from somebody Absolutely. in there as well, which is fill in in the fullback positions. Yep. When we're potentially exposed because their job is to be all the way up the pitch. Right Now, obviously, there's still going to be... It's a bit of the Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jurgen Klopp conversation re- recently. The management team are willing to accept the risk of exposure because the, the the offensive capabilities of our fullback is more important than the defensive ones in terms of the team strategy. So you're not expecting Sands to be able to do exactly the same job and he can't be in two places at once because both of our fullbacks go on. Yeah. But he does have the ability to make that a back three, if you like, whilst both fullbacks are bombing forward. And that's yeah. some of the level of protection you're looking for. And he seems to have the mobility, the defensive capability, the strength, and dare I say it, from just that limited the, you know the limited game time he's had, I suppose. He looks as though he's got a decent enough football and brain to understand where the space and the, the danger is. Yeah. I think as well, Shug, there's a bit of um there's development there. I, I think the, the the guy's young enough that you can develop him in, in, in whatever um way you see fit. I, and I get the other the argument that he's not our player, he's in for an 18 month loan. How does it affect someone of his ilk perhaps looking to break into the same team. I think about maybe guys like Cole McKinnon, who's having a great time at Partick Thistle just now on loan. If he was still at Rangers looking for first-team football, is James Sands sort of preventing him growing, if you like? It's all ifs, buts, and maybe. His versatility is really important. Had to go to centre-half yesterday after we lost Ben Davies at half-time. I think Gio said sort of post-match that the the injury to Davies, we would know a little bit more about it. Um, Probably today, I suspect we'll hear more about it tomorrow when he does his presser for Ajax on Tuesday night. Um, It'd be a real blow to lose Davies as well as Ridvan taking into account 
everything else and everyone else that we know is injured at the moment, Chug, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's uh, the whole what's the better 11 or fit 11 or a unfit 11. Yeah, absolutely. The is kind of is getting closer and uh, I think we're a keeper away from have a, having a stronger unfit 11. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say which keeper. <laughs> no, one. I don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not cutting the ones. Yeah, I don't have my tin hat in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's going back to James Sands. According to football manager, it's a 5.25 million agreed price <laughs> that we've got. Uh, but his versatility and being able, you're confident now with him going in at centre half. Yeah, it's absolutely. not a big deal. So it'll be a blow to Lewis Davies, but I don't think we lose that much. The only thing I think would say we would lose would be the ability to let Lundstrom drive forward as he would then have to go back into that six role and patrol again uh, but fingers crossed I think it's the second or third time that Davies is and it's definitely the second time he's been taken off at half time yeah. which has felt something so fingers crossed he'll be fine for the Ajax game and the next three games after it yeah, absolutely. So listen, don't forget you're watching this Cybrox. It's Scott Patterson on your Sunday night, joined tonight by Shug Niblo and Tommy McIntyre. If you are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and toggle your notifications on so you get a notification each time we go live on Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. We're also available on Facebook and you can check us out on Twitter as well. All the obvious social media platforms. Tommy, um, when everyone was going through to, to Ibrox yesterday, it became quite apparent that a certain Michael Beal was in town. Um, I'm trying to think how to word this properly without sounding silly. I'm a big fan, a really big fan of Michael Beal. And I think if the um, if the, the job Ibrox was ever to come up, I think he would be my number one candidate to, to, to sort of take over from Geo, should he be interested. I wonder what you think the optics were um, for Michael Beagle being in Glasgow um, on such an important at such an important juncture in the season for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, the current Rangers manager. Yeah, optics is the right the right word. Or perception, perception is everything. Weakness is uh, is often perceived, not and not reality. But if I'm the manager, and I know that the fans are talking about Michael Beagle, and they're yeah. saying. Listen, geo out and all that type of thing. Do I want Michael Beale standing for selfies, being in with the fans, getting that goodwill, taking a seat in the director's box, watching my team? It tells you there's either a couple of things. It's one of one of a few things, which is either Geo is absolutely certain he's the right man and is absolutely comfortable in his convictions. Bring in whoever you want, get them sitting there, watch my team. Who you tell me I've lost the dressing room. Watch them take this team apart in front of you. That's what I do, right? And it's, you know, we're talking about Michael Beale being in there. It's not a bad backhander from Gio and his squad to say, oh, that's how a team plays football, by the way, Michael. And listen, I'm a massive Michael Beale fan as well. I am, however, absolutely not on the Michael Beale for Rangers <laughs> bandwagon at this point in time. You were going to so, say train again, weren't you? I was going to say train, and I was trying to think of another mode of transport, <laughs> right? Um, but the, the hype, the hype plane, I don't know. <laughs> go. Um, but the, the point being, great assistant, he's got a very good reputation in football circles. He's obviously very talented. Yeah, People are quite rightly looking at the job he's done at QPR so far. For the love of God, wait until at least he does a full season in the manager's hot seat. Yep. And come back to I mean, there's people saying, get Michael Beal in right now. Come on. Right, just calm down a little bit in, in terms of that. That's my personal take. Anyway, I think I've had enough of just chucking people in because they seem like the right fit. Remember as well, Rangers fans on mass were asking for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst uh, as well. Yeah. You know, and saying he's the right guy. And he actually had won stuff as a manager. Pretty sure Michael Beale hasn't, you know, apart from plaudits. And you can't shine plaudits at the end of a season and don't get counted in your trophy hole. So, yeah, back to the point, which is the optics were pretty poor. So either Gio's very comfortable in that or he was a bit blindsided by it and it was the board playing a little bit, because there's smart people on the board, board playing a little bit of kind of politics there. I would also be having a chat with our media 
team and saying, hold on a minute, right, come on, guys. Yeah. I expect it to be protected here a wee bit. Because if you're Gio, you're sitting there going, right, you brought this guy in and he's sitting in front and saying, now it could have been set up for weeks, right? And of course, absolutely. All of that. And it will have been, right, in terms of he's got a chance to come up and see the game. He's probably visiting friends, all that type of good stuff, right? But if I'm sitting in my day job and I know that the bosses and the people that I serve, so to speak, because the management team serves the fans, right? Yeah. Want me out, and they've got a name of a person that they think they want to replace me with, and that person walks up behind me in the stand. I'm probably not going to be happy with the people who are the power brokers and all the media team to say, "But well, where was my air cover here?" Because can you imagine if Bill's in there and he's getting the pictures taken and he's waving to the fans in the stadium and all that kind of stuff, and he was milking it, right? And he's not a stupid man either. He knows what that looks like, right? Yeah. Can you imagine if Aberdeen would have won? Would that have been like it full time? Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a really difficult place to put up your own actual Rangers manager in. And sometimes, you know, we, we forget that even when we don't like it, that's our Rangers manager. Aye. So not ready just to give Michael Beale a clap on the back row of that stuff right now. But he's definitely one for the future because I certainly probably want the job. Do you, do you, the thing that, um, so where, and I don't want to speak about where I, I've got a good view where he was when, when he, he came in. Um, he sat just in front of Conor Goldson. Um, he, he spoke to Goldson when he came into the director's box for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. There, there was a, a sort of decent sort of embrace between them both. They had the, I would suggest they had seen each other for a long time. Um, so they caught up. Um, and it was just, it was really quite bizarre for me. Um, I just find it quite strange that um, that he was there. I, I just find it strange. I don't know what you think, Shug, if you, if you agree with that. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Uh, we know that the love that he's got for Rangers. Uh, he's continually spoke about us last year when uh, he was working as Gerard's assistant for the good time and stuff he had up here. But Tommy suggests he's, he's a very clever man and he should have been smart enough to know that he shouldn't be anywhere near Ibrox when the manager's under such pressure. If we are jollying along, sitting five points clear at the top, winning every week. Gio was doing a great job. It's a different thing for him to come back then. But again, we're talking about the Rangers media team uh, and optics and things like that. I don't think uh, we're surprised at all that the Rangers media team have once again got it wrong in the way that they portray it. Uh, the big picture of Beal and Golden being big pals and stuff like that in front of everybody. I don't think that was the right message to be sending out. But I'm glad that Gio got the performance he did just for the off the players. And unfortunately for Michael Beal, he had lost the night before with QPR. But I think in his, he should have been wise enough to say, look, no, the manager's under pressure. I'm just going to stay away from the game. I'm not going to get into that controversy yeah. then if the Rangers job does come up it's not something that you can throw back yeah at him for being in there so yeah no I don't think it was uh, the best move by either him the club or our media team yeah I mean listen I think for and with you guys I actually felt for you a little bit because I, I don't think it could have been particularly easy for him to turn around and see the guy that I would say probably north of 75% of the support, see him as a natural successor. Some, I don't know, perhaps even just waiting on on, on Gio to have a bad result. Um, Tommy, it brings us quite nicely on to Gio. Um, well, yesterday was really, really good, and I don't think we can get away from that. It's always nice to beat Aberdeen. I would have been delighted to beat Aberdeen one nothing yesterday because they're a horrible lot. Um, to to pump them in the manner that we did was, was really quite satisfying. However, um, Swallow and summer and all of that jazz. Um, it's only ninety minutes. I do wonder if the the Ajax game maybe comes at a bad time because I think we will still go into that game on Tuesday and almost prepare for a bit of a doing based on what we've seen in the Champions League so far. Um, I wonder if it would have been better if we were just after yesterday just prepped ahead to next weekend in the hope that we can carry on our domestic form in the manner that we done yesterday. And again, I, th I think you're I think you're spot on. Um and 
I know we're not going to labour it because they don't deserve to to have what you know how they approach the game spoken about. But the Aberdeen fans wear a disgrace, and I hope that there is action taken against them. Yeah. Um. By the governing bodies, I won't naturally hold my breath, but one would like to think you know if I think you're right. If that's an old farm team that does that, either of us, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a Scottish executive summit. You know, there's a crisis a conference or whatever, but it will get walked past as some some bad apples, and, and it was deplorable, absolutely deplorable, right? In terms of yeah, swallowed summer. I, I'm with you as well, and it's the same thing for the team as it is for the players that I was talking about. You want to be a success at Rangers, it's consistency, right? It's not one moment of greatness; it's consistency because that's how you get trophies and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I I don't particularly want to face any Ajax coming to Ibrox. That said, I mean, by and large, Ibrox would be in the Champions League, we've been actually all right. We were decent enough until probably the sending off against Napoli. Um, although Napoli were better than us. And I've said before, their movement in the middle of the park was a joy to watch, actually. Yeah. Um, and we were great for the first half against Liverpool. And then mistakenly thought the games only lasted, you know, <laughs> 40, 45 minutes and decided to send out, you know, our, uh, our stunt doubles for the, the second team. half. And that, <laughs> I, and, that, and that came, yeah, it was the with Avatar. So, yeah, but so uh, we could potentially perform there as well. Um, but I'm not I'm not overly confident. And I do think it talks to the, the psychology of the team. So, you know, I think in terms of if we get doing, well, it pushes back. Does it have that wash over into the stands of this negative feeling about Gio as well? Quite, quite possibly. Actually, I think quite rightly, uh, maybe is, is the best way to say that. Probably what my, my problem is, and I don't always want to reference them right because we've got so many other teams to play, but I don't think anybody will land on a decision about Geo or um, the squad until the next time we play in an old firm. Yeah. Because it was the, perm- the permeation through our feeling or the, the rationale for that feeling is that we got a doing part of it. Yeah. Right? And it wasn't a doing that was surprised. You know, Ange Postacoglu didn't jump up and do something surprising tactically that day. We knew exactly what to do. Gio set the team up to do that. That team didn't perform. And this team have a habit of going missing sometimes when it's really, really big pressure. So yeah, you can turn up, you can beat a really poor Aberdeen side. And you can then take your beating in the Champions League. And by and large, right, Liverpool game aside, by and large, most Rangers fans would have said Champions League, okay, it might not work out for us there, right? That, that's relatively, we're not hanging you out on that. But if this team beat everybody in our next round of fixtures, which I think includes the likes of, off the top of my head, St. Johnston, Hearts, St. Mirren are in there somewhere as well, I think. That might be the run of it, Hibs, yeah. um, Aberdeen and all that again. And then get to the old firm game and get turned over. Then it's, it's the same record. And yeah. that's what's really important with this team. If they want to break the cycle of negativity. Don't beat Ajax. Because it's not going to change in. Yeah. Beat Celtic. Because that's going to show that you can actually deliver in the big moment domestically. And that's what we need to do this season. So that's probably that forward looking psychology piece. And that's what I'm interested in. That said, I'd prefer if we won every single game, including Ajax. Of course. But I think that's the, the underground part of it, the really important part of it. And that's what's driving some of the narrative and why people are hedging their bets when they talk about G when this team shows when it really matters. Yeah. Shug, the key is clearly to to drive on from the result yesterday. They must take a huge deal of confidence from being so um so intense, um, so attractive to watch, um, really fluid in their play. Um as I say, will they play like that against Ajax on Tuesday night? Listen, I'd love to see them play against that like that um, on Tuesday night. I doubt they will because I don't think Ajax will let them play that way. Um, but they must take a, a big deal of confidence from from Saturday afternoon at Ibrox. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, going on to John Lundstrom and he was saying that that's the way Joe's been sending the team out to play. It's the yeah. players that haven't been performing. Uh, so who knows? Maybe we will see it in Tuesday night. We don't know. Uh, Ajax are unquestionably the weakest team. Out of the three we've got, I was going to say the weakest team in our group. We are the weakest team in our group. <laughs> weakest team out of the teams we play in our group. Uh, and as Tommy said, we put up good shows 
in against Liverpool for 50 minutes, 55 minutes, and against Napoli until the red card. Uh, and we've seen how good Napoli have been in the subsequent games. Uh, arguably, if we hadn't had the red card, we may have got a result. Yeah. Uh, so I think the team should be full of confidence going into the next game. Uh, I brought Brooks, it's going to be as so much as I think we can get a result, I don't think we can win 5 0. So it's going to be the last European night of the season. Yeah, so Ibrox will be rocking for it. And yeah, I, I don't see Ajax as being far superior to what PSV were. So I think the opportunity is there. And if we can nick a result on Tuesday night, it could just build the confidence going up into them last three games. But as Tommy says, I'll happily sacrifice Tuesday night if it means winning every other game, yeah. including Celtic and the next run of fixtures. So, but yeah, no, they've got to take great confidence from it was different types as goals to score as well. It wasn't just the same ones, even throwing a missed penalty and missing one on ones and stuff like that. I mean, taking eight or ten off Aberdeen would have been lovely, but. Just yeah. saving a couple of goals for Tuesday night, hopefully. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, Chuck, good to have you on. It's, it's always good to to have your input. You are away to Canada a little um, later on, and a little later on in November at some point, aren't you? Yeah, off to Canada for a couple of weeks uh, during the World Cup break. Uh, so I won't miss any Rangers. Hopefully, I won't miss any good performances. But yeah, no, I'm hopefully enjoy that and also. Good to see the women win again today and go Absolutely. top of the league and three points clear of a certain club. Absolutely. Five nothing doing as well, which is um yeah, you're absolutely right to bring that up. Good news. And um Malky Thompson seems to be um seem to be working um in at the in the women's group. Everything's going well. Shug, good to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, mate. Yes, yes. Tommy, always good to have you on. Listen, it was good. One of the, the things that I think we've missed is that um it was particularly good for them to be in Glasgow, get a scudding, and then not get any trains up the road, wasn't it? I'm always delighted if, if people get hardship uh, yeah. coming coming away from Ibrox. I mean, I would say I'm not as I'm not as fancy as uh, as Shug. I'm not going to Canada. I will be going to Iceland. Oof. Yeah, yeah. There's one just down the road. Uh, <laughs> uh, there, we, there we go. I've, uh, I've I've delivered my big moment. That, that's that's me. That's consistency. Uh, yes. yeah, Shug, I. I you know, you, you might not want to share this, but I figure you're away to Canada for a particular reason. Yeah, uh, Colin, I'm not spying like I was in China last year. I'm definitely <laughs> Colin this time. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not searching for a new Scott Arfield. I just don't. I don't know if maybe the, the listeners realise that you're a Paralympian. I am a Paralympian. Thanks. Uh, yeah, no, I will check Colin, so I'll be representing Great Britain and, well, Scotland this year uh, on Canada, uh, doing our very best to try and make somebody proud. Wish you all the very, very best, as I'm sure, I'm sure Scott and everybody else will as well. Um, yeah. yeah, nice to be on, Scott. That was your question to me, I think. <laughs> it's always nice to be on every now and again when you guys allow me to, to actually take part. Get out of the cave. Yes, exactly. Somewhere, somewhere in a hidden bunker. <laughs> don't forget <laughs> we're live this week on Monday Wednesday and Friday with Craig and Kyle and Adam we've also got a post-match um, sandwiched in there between the gigs on Monday Wednesday night to discuss hopefully um, a positive performance and ideally a win against Ajax um, at Ibrox on Tuesday sorry can I, so who did you say is, is doing Tuesdays Craig, Kyle and Adam See, it's nice. So what we've done is we've we've played the uh, the older members, and then we're going to blood the kids. Uh, uh, the young team. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> System works. Goodness me. Um, we should say if you aren't already following us on on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook, make sure you do it. If you are looking at us just now on your YouTube channel, if you're avoiding the chats tonight, um, we really thank you getting involved. We will do it all again next week. Follow us across our social media if you can subscribe and put your notifications on so as I said um, earlier on you will get a notification each time we go live we thank you in advance for joining us thanks for watching good night